Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another video. This is going to be really quick. This video is going to be called M Audio Code 49 MIDI Freeze Fix. This video is meant for the people who own the M Audio Code 49, have tried everything, and still have MIDI freezes. Now, when I mean try everything, seriously try everything. Try multiple MIDI cables, multiple USB cables. Try it with power plugged into the wall and really the most fail safe way to know if there's something truly wrong with this machine is that if you get a solid MIDI cable and you plug the M audio into the power wall and then you with that one MIDI cable you go into a synthesizer hardware that you know has been stable that you've used for a while and just play that off the M audio and if you still get those MIDI freezes and the hang-ups that you never got on the hardware synth before, you're sure that the problem lies in the M-Audio. The main issue with this is M-Audio never lives up to the fact that they made faulty devices. Now, not everyone has this fault, but it's a good chunk of the community, enough to know that it's not just a few random defects. A large amount of these got shipped out defected. Now, if you contact M Audio themselves, you're going to get the runaround about how it could be so many other things because it could be a computer, it could be a MIDI wire, it could be a cable. That the problem isn't in the M Audio, that the problem is somewhere else, and you need to contact other people. This can get really frustrating when you are smart enough, or me, I'm not even the smartest person in the world, and I could figure out that this was that the M audio was the main issue. I kept it around hoping that one day I'd find a fix because mine was already out of warranty. I couldn't return it, just like many other people who are stuck with the machine. And I, will, I always kind of hoped I'd find a fix because I really liked the keys. I just couldn't deal with the lockups. One of my subscribers actually pointed out a forum which where people are removing the aftertouch ribbon and for me, so far, it's worked. This is for people who have the M Audio Co. 49, have tried everything, pretty much given up on the machine, and you don't have warranty, so you can't turn it in. You like the keys, so you want to be able to play it. And so this is fix is for you. The first thing you're going to need is some screwdrivers. They need to be Phillips. I recommend you have one small and thin one kind of like on the left there because you're going to have a few in the middle that have really tight plastic around it and you need a smaller Phillips to get into those. Once you have these two screwdrivers, you go into the back of your M audio and remove all the screws. Once you remove all the screws, be careful because the top will be loose, but lay it down flat and you should be able to just pull up the tops pretty easily and then have it standing straight up to the point where you get it like this you're going to want to be focusing on the left side of this board if you notice i zoom in on the left this focus section right here this jumble of wires is specifically where the aftertouch is as i zoom in more you see it's on the upper left hand corner of the board it's actually labeled aftertouch now this is the most dangerous part of the operation if you notice there's some hot glue left in there from when i removed it so you must get in there and kind of pry it out a little bit. And there's another ribbon right next to it. And if you notice, I actually slit that ribbon a little bit with the knife I was using. And I was kind of freaked out that I hurt the drum pads because it's connected to the drum pads from what it says. But I've tested the drum pads and they seem pretty solid. I've tested all the settings and I didn't seem to cause any damage. That slit I made was really small. If it was bigger, it would have probably caused some damage to the pads. It's by far the biggest risk in this operation. So being careful, try to remove that aftertouch plug just like in this picture. As you can see, it is now removed. And once you have the aftertouch unplugged, put your cover back on. Maybe test out the power before you turn on the screws. But at that point, you should have no more aftertouch in the M Audio. And for me, that fixed my freezes. I wish M Audio had an internal way to turn off aftertouch. It would have made this whole process way easier. But they don't seem to want to address the issue. So, for so the people who are stuck with it and want to take the issue on themselves, this is a way to get a stable M Audio. It's been stable with me for multiple days. I've read on forums that people have been saying it's been stable for months after having issues exactly like mine. So, I'm going to keep you updated that if anything goes wrong, 
if they happen to freeze, um, I'll make sure I tell you guys. But as of right now, this is pretty amazing, and I figured I'd share it with you guys. As always, if you like this type of stuff, you know, live jams, tutorials, patches, tips, and even these type of things when I find them, subscribe because I try to stay very active. Thank you very much, YouTube, and have a great day.